When joy reminds you of it. When sun does and sun days and breakfast suggested you best make the best eggs you've made in a month. And they're buttered, they're sunburnt bottom and firm, full of time and intent, and there's no hot sauce, and there's no salt, and there's no onions even. It's just heat and a patient spatula and a wish, and you lift this tender little morsel of joy up to your nose, and it smells good and you put it in your mouth and it tastes amazing and you realize that this is something you learned for her how to make love an ingredient when loss aches physically the day a tweak in your intestines is clearly the symptom of the absence of a look when passion became a concrete noun, a tone of voice, the particular conditioning of that stranger's hair is breathable to you somehow, and you bleed a little when you see it pass when life became so free you could use it as a vacuum. And I could fractal beer choices and bar atmospheres for months, and drunk reminds you of it, and sober suggests it, or its absence, and drinking one more is, was, it, and the dark is, when the dark comes, and your words are wings dipped and tossed, so you whisk those words deep into the text message area of your phone, but at the last second, you stop. And it stings, but you take that phone, you put it deep down in your jeans, and you go for a walk when you're walking, but your gait drags, and you feel a pity, but it's an old pity. It fits a little tight in the shoulders these days, so you sit when you're sitting, but the longing feels quaint, so you like, fuck it, I'm gonna go home and put on my most ridiculous hat. You eat a sandwich bigger than your face. You smoke until your right lung is a raisin. You say something to a stranger on the train that should have gotten you slapped. I don't know what you do. I don't know what I did. Whatever you do to move on and feel something again, you know, you do it and it's done. And maybe you feel proud when you feel proud and the old arguments are moot, and you're making steady money now, you outgrew the inside jokes and anime. Hell, you even knock boots every now and again, but even then, when even movement reminds you, reminds you you've moved, reminds you that movement means ground, and that ground is required to fly, that otherwise everything is just space then. What do I do? Thank you, thank you. I didn't know if this was gonna be a, like a clapping set or, or a laugh clapping set. Not clapping set is fine, you know, just let it roll. See, that's why, that's why snaps are so, are so lovely. Thank you, Wildcard. Wildcard is, is, is our second reader for the night. Could you please put your hands together for him? Hold on a second. This is the first time I actually met him, but, uh, but I remember his, his nickname, so that, that's why. Uh, this is a more recent uh, poem. I'm making a poem after, I grew up a Jehovah's Witness, and so there are certain scriptures that kind of like have stood out to me even past that time. And um, one of them is uh, just the entire chapter of Ecclesiastics 1, which is kind of like a lament of Solomon to, um, you know, to just the vanity of, of all things that are not of God. And, uh, and I'm also reading for um, a lot of beat poets uh, for an event that I'll tell you a little bit more about that's um, kind of like a tribute to Allen Ginsberg live poetry, um, live poetry talk show that I'm going to be hosting this uh, Tuesday. Uh, but I'll talk, I'll talk about that a, a little bit later. So this is titled Ecclesiastics One. The rush of key presses clumping like raindrops in vain. The short interval core presses by Antonio at 9 a.m. in vain. The meals in vain. The baked skin crisping five times longer than it takes to take taste takes to taste and then gone the curated sink hum that dies. The high made a memory. 
My parents zoned on the incoming church session identical to the last week's sermon, saying, this is enough, son, the book's in vain. How a sentence origamis into the universe when you blink like a butterfly, winging it, it, winging it a fraction of a lifetime like a breath, the sex in vain. Gone but fresh that way also when there is no dance made where anyone really ever watches, which is to say no one ever really watches the audience in vain. The hollow copper weight my skin a pinned, expensive chess piece in anticipation of a future move, this poem in vain, and yet it lingers, spits thin bubbles into the reacting light just above, gasping at a gas I trust can be measured in ways past my sight, the sun in vain, a peel of citrus splayed, uh, splayed of heat, a few millennia from now gone, the wisp of clouds containing containing ballet, Higgs bosines defining measure, breathing gently through the past, through past, through past the fan landing on the shoulders like a silken robe. It's called playing dead. Mother, shudder still, I'm sorry, Semen covers the night. 3 a.m. alone and the album that makes me want to play dead is on. Ambient, Orwellian throat on the surface of a proto-planet. Brain spaceship, same time, never stops vibrating. Hands tremble in your voice. In first person, because Warren is, is a better verb for fallen, tell your father I, he had the better side of the mirror that my voice peters before it reaches the rear seats, that my pen ran out of ink before I wrote my wishes down, let alone applied for them, the email I never sent replies daily, please stop with the limping. I wrote a list of sounds inside my head. It starts like this. The blind teddy bear that tells me to listen to the dark long past bedtime. The badger that licks my foot until I kick it in the kidneys, but I don't. The trashed jack-in-the-box with a, with a warped record's, record's tempo for a beat. The artist barista squealing on duty for what is so exactly it, you know? And then sneering when I ask her for a mug. Bad little Jamal that pulled her bra and said what when she turned and then dared with his chest out and his eyes cold. The silent carpenter without a sense of time beyond the mounting sawdust. The shattered hard drives eternally dying drum solo. The feral cat's intimacy echoing through the back alleys of my femur. The shattering of the hollow princess that gulps 40s as a joke and only smokes good weed. The wine of the virgin prince. The panting of the lonely creep. An epitaph read aloud for three nondescript heroes. The disquieting click in the back of the mute's open mouth 